<laughs> Who had the over under at 1.8 seconds? <laughs> yeah. My favorite character was the cat. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 when it turned out that there was something weird about that cat, where did that come from? I'm like, I'm like, all right, can we get to the gimmick with the cat already? Because it's so awkwardly shoehorned in here. Yeah, you could tell the second that, like, the the second time the cat's on screen and it's like a big CG cat and not like a real cat. Oh yeah, like, oh, okay. with, with well, a then wacky. Be... And then it's Nibbler. It's, <laughs> it's Nibbler from Futurama. Or no, it was him. It was Sam Jackson picking it up. I think he picked up a CG cat. Oh really? I think so. Like some, uh, yeah. I think even even little stuff like that. I will. I gotta give a, a shout out to the Slash Film Cast. Um, uh, uh, Jeff Kanata loved it, but uh, uh, he was first to. Uh, to point out, like, somebody was like, man, and that CGI on Sam Jackson is so good. Like, I kept looking for the lines. And, uh, and Jeff goes, I found him. And he's like, when he runs. <laughs> he <is> suddenly <laughs> lumbering like a 65-year-old man. Uh, I'll tell you, that, the, the, at least the face de-aging. De-aging is great. Uh, it looked awesome. Like, yep. that did look, it, it felt like. You were watching a, a night. Coulson, Coulson looked like he stepped right out of Minecraft. For de aging. Really, really, really good. Mission accomplished. I never noticed any of the de aging stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, yeah, I, th I thought it looked awesome. But, I mean, like, yeah. they, they really led the way on, on that. And it certainly wasn't the, like, PlayStation 1 hellscape oh. uh, Rogue One was. Of Grand Moff Darkin. Tron, yeah, Tron Legacy in the opening segment with, with Jeff Bridges, like, <laughs> and it's even the words are it was even weird because like his words are slurred i'm like how do you do that <laughs> i'm going to tron i'm going to hey boy i love you i love tron too <laughs> hey, that scene would have been better if he is his back to his kid he uh they flash froze it and he said they had him narrate the lines uh, because I'm your father, I think I'll best orchestrate this by turning around and doing a robot impression before I say, <laughs> we are always on the same team. That's a it's wacky bit we do. <laughs> you can dance if you don't. <laughs> S-A-F. <laughs> uh, right, good show, I'm good show, <laughs> people. I think I'm good on my side whenever you are, Andrew. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. And the man with his hand on the knobs, Mr. Bryce Castillo. This is me going and adjusting. The, we actually don't Whoa. use faders, really, mostly. The knobs are pretty much <laughs> All right, that. That was a very horrible intro. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm like, well, say knobs. It'll sound better, won't it? <laughs> so, shout out to all the tech heads, all the mixing board fans out there. Our yeah. producer Bryce over there, please. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, uh, I didn't get any sleep. There was a chainsaw next door. Like, you know, the, well, I mean, there was somebody handling the chainsaw. The ah, man, we fine, really so. feel a lot of sympathy for you. Talk about three friends of yours that, that are really just feeling a lot of sympathy for you I mean, and your lack really of rough, sleep. Because, like, normally I like to get about nine hours or <laughs> so. Must be tough. A chainsaw, that, you that, say? That, that, and yesterday, it, like, I didn't get out much. I just had to sit around and lay around a lot. You know? Ah! Yeah. Oh. Tell you what, certainly wasn't, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and I had my keys. I had my oh, keys. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing that you can find out at 2.30 in the morning as you approach your way home, finally, is that you've lost your keys in Austin. Who oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, for those of you that don't know, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the gang was at the uh, South by Southwest Digital. How was that, guys? A bit of a busy week. Turned out uh, we did we did the night. Justin flew into town. We did the night attack. And then we decided last minute at 1230 the following morning, let's say we hop on a plane, go up to Dallas. Let's go visit uh, uh, Glenn Beck's studio and visit our friend Andrew Heaton. Have a quick lunch, hop on a plane, come on back. And then let's get ready for uh, uh, our South by Southwest <laughs> event, including uh, VIPs coming in from all over the United States to, yeah. to see shows. Oh, the, and then I slipped in another show. I did another bonus because I figured we didn't have enough shows leading up through the weekend. I did another show on Friday uh, uh, with Mike TV, 
And then we did our big, gigantic South by So Wasted uh, uh, event. Thank you to everybody who came out to that. We had an amazing turnout, and uh, uh, it went shockingly uh, uh, all according to plan. Uh, uh, huge thanks to Bryce, who was uh, oh my uh, God. instrumental in making sure hmm. – a miracle happened. worker. Next, By the end of it, we were crying and saying "wah wah." It was amazing. <laughs> Thanks. <God>. So, <laughs> thank, I'm, I'm glad, thank, thank you. I was saying, at least one of you got it. <laughs> I'm I'm signing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you get you guys? You, you know what we're talking about the end of uh, the, the oh the Helen movie, Keller. The, yeah, the the miracle w- worker. The in, the entire movie is somebody trying to get through to Helen Keller, and she keeps signing uh, in on her hand like W A W A Wah Wah. This is water, and uh, and it, it, it ends with you know her experiencing water and grokking that uh, that that the sim- symbolic spelling out of hand gestures means this this cool liquid in her uh- hand. That she never experienced before. What do they do? Like they're well, giving her uh, water. Well, because because she had language and then lost it. That's the thing. Is is like uh, she had gotten farther enough, far enough in language that she was able to translate the experience of touching water into Wawa. But then she got ill and lost. I think, all I of think that she wanted a sub. I think she wanted a delicious Wawa sub. <laughs> <laughs> and those shakes. Forget about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that we were able to feed the latent desire of the miracle worker heads that have. <laughs> So uh, just a, a little tiny after things moment. Um, uh, all you all, Brian, I want you to describe this weekend to Brian working at Dell a billion years ago. Oh, God. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> you, you time travel into the office. Not not just like a bit, like tw- almost 20 years on the nose. This is 20 years ago today. I am thinking like, oh, maybe I should give this magic thing a try. Uh Man, it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> all right, Brian, not only will you give this magic thing a try, then you'll rock it so hard that you'll switch over to something called uh, uh, hosting shows on the Internet. Yes, the Internet has video, Brian. Uh, porn, I know you don't I believe this. Porn, Brian? Uh, Am I doing porn? Don't tell me it's not porn. I don't... <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but, but, but you will uh, tell so many stories that people will travel from all over the freaking country to see you and your friends also, by the way, your friends w- with a bunch of people uh, involved with Penn and Teller, uh, it's great. Um, and uh, it, you'll do a good show. And get this, you won't even do any magic. That's the part future me will not believe. Like, I'm going to try to it. make it in magic, and then I'm going to do something that doesn't involve magic. All right, Justin, you're standing in line at the permit office. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 hey, uh, J- Justin, uh, 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 remember how uh, you just got kicked out of your comedy troupe? <laughs> uh, oh, that oh, has that not happened yet? I came back to it. Okay, well, bad news. <laughs> You're uh, going to get kicked oh, out wait, of wait, comedy Hold on, wait a minute. You haven't got kicked out yet? Quit right now. <laughs> Give me your phone. I'm going to text them right now and say I quit. <laughs> you, just, it's, you have hate in your heart and I know it. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, geez, it was uh, one of those moments where, you know, whenever whenever your ambition kind of ratchets up to a certain level, this is like kind of like when you're working out and you can feel it, right? Because you can feel your body reacting to it. Is you always know when your ambition has reached a certain good level of growth when you can't really appreciate the moment <laughs> because you're just redlining and making sure that everything is fine and it's really only in moments like this afterward when you can look back and see all the pictures and see all the video and hear everybody uh uh, being excited about it and know that at least it went well in the moment and people really enjoyed it you can appreciate it but it was uh uh just just awesome that we were able to to pull it off i mean like this is you know uh uh, uh, that was a a a legit venue and it looked fantastic and everybody had a great time Uh, we didn't really have any drop off of people Leaving, they stayed for three hours. Three and had hours. A All right, Bryce, you're in middle school dealing <laughs> DVDs of Bubblegum Crisis. <laughs> um, uh, oh, geez. Uh, uh, there will be a thing called podcasting <laughs> <laughs> and YouTube. Uh, I don't. I. I. Uh, I. I think I'd be very excited that I'm working in digital stuff and and that. All this stuff is working out, and and uh, that 
uh, that I can meet so many great people and, and work on a lot of great stuff like this. There, there is something to the visceral nature of, and we've talked about this before, but it's like it's one thing, you know, you turn on a mic, you talk to a mic, you talk to each other, you see a chat, you yeah. look at numbers, and you're like, those numbers seem big or whatever. It's a different thing when all of a sudden you got hundreds of yeah. people there, and, 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 and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. wait, no. You know, we exist in this shared, wonderful delusion. This is amazing. Yeah. A anytime there's live events, I always uh, feel really proud when anyone finds uh, is able to find find me when I'm not like uh, you know wrangling some some piece of tech uh, and and is able to say that they like something that I do with with the shows or something because it's <clears throat> it's like uh, I don't know it makes it feel very real when it's especially with someone I, I don't know really and and knowing that. Uh, 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 they 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 like it and that the stuff works well, and, and it and it hits in a way that a DM wouldn't right mm -hmm. a DM would be like name avatar person possibly yeah. my mom under in a alt whatever yeah. uh, saying something nice the, okay like the 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 one for me from this weekend was, was someone came up to me after the show and was like hey uh, you know uh, a few months ago you guys were talking about about dating and uh, it it was really good to hear hear you talk about that because I have going through similar issues and and uh it feels validating because because we're not doing this in front of an audience 99.9 percent .9 of the time right right and so uh it's it's it was great it's great you're gonna have a good time uh five <laughs> middle, school Bryce. middle school middle school <laughs> <laughs> Good time. I just I imagine like trying to explain to our much much younger selves a show like this, right? Remember hackers and like they go tune in to watch the show Hack the Planet, which was like I don't know, which actually wasn't on the internet. It was like I don't know some like, hack TV st station or something. It's like, you know, oh, in the future you're gonna be you know doing a show talk about weird things. Or imagine like techno music. Well, it does before the show, but you know blaring and all this sort of stuff. Not like, <laughs> yeah, guys. So this weekend, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. More glamorous. Uh, 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 it was it was super great, and uh, man, I can't uh, say enough thank you to everybody who uh, made the decision to spend uh, uh, you know hard-earned money coming out to the show, and and specifically everybody who also did the VIP thing uh, uh, the next day. That was uh, uh, amazing and awesome, and really kind of financially sort of proved that this is viable. This is some this is this is stuff that we can do, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I, I will I will say for sure that you know we've been building up to this for probably about a year now, just doing little shows. We did the Night Attack stuff on the road, but I would love to do a Weird Things live event. I would love to do uh, uh, more stuff that we have, and either uh, as as a big combination like we did on Saturday, or or separately. You guys have demonstrated that we can we can viably put this kind of stuff together. Wonderful, um, you know. You know your event was missing something, though. Oh man, you know you always think uh, the next. Uh, you know, as soon as everything's done, you're like, oh, I wish we could have done this, and I wish we could have done that. You know, uh, what, 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 I, I can never put my finger on it, though, uh, Andrew. What, 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 what was it? I, you know, I think there would be a really, really, really attention getting could be really cool. Would have been, I'm sure, what you guys did was swell, but there's this thing you could have done. And I think you can do it right. I think the problem is somebody did this, and it was cool, got a lot of attention, and some other people kind of like, eh, I don't know about this thing. But I think between your brain power, your collective brain power, you know, what it's worth, I think you guys could have figured this thing out and could have done this better. Okay. Here, here, okay. Here is what I suggest. All right. Leading up to the event, Brian dies. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Ooh. I mean, I certainly have failed live on stage many times. I, no, no, you're not. You die, like Brian. Like, I mean, a heart attack, sitting at the table. He's like, "Hey, the kids are at school. I'm gonna eat some Fruit Loops. Everyone's supposed to be on a diet." And then, the, 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 the report is you just just collapse face first into it. All that. I mean, Brian, uh, magic is all about prep. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. Okay. And then we turn South by South by so wasted into. Semicolon a Brian Brushwood memorial. Okay, I mean that's and uh, casket what? viewing. Okay, right. I mean, I mean it is it is a once in a lifetime event. Like we are definitely uh, that that well, is combined. You, you can do it every year. You can just bring the body out. But anyhow, so <laughs> so it'd be a somber event. People have with beer. It'd be a somber event with lots of beer on the stage. Brian's in the casket. 
Bryce is, you know, Bryce is actually nonplussed. It's really kind of weird. We thought he'd be crying. <laughs> Bryce, Bryce is just sort of like, we're like, he's in, Eric's like, he's just in shock. He's just in shock. He's like, hey, guys. I'm like, yeah. Brian's dead. Like, yeah. Um, yeah so but... uh, do you watch the new Netflix series? Like, oh, he's just. <laughs> It's like uh, he's just—he just can't. He's not—he's—he he needs to process it, you know. Uh, Justin, meanwhile, devastated, devastated. You I'm, know. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing myself on the casket and yeah. uh, you know screaming to take me. Like it's—it's it's ugly. <laughs> and you and then you fall to your knees and you're like, God, which I don't really believe in, but maybe now I do, and maybe I'm being punished. Bring this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man back. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's what I would do. That, that, that's, uh, that's, you know, the, the emotion coursing through me. Of course I would say that. And then you, you get everybody else to pray. Okay. Uh, this is totally on brand for the show and for South by So Wasted. <laughs> Brian's dead. We've, I think that might be something we'd have to clear with the venue to bring a corpse in. But, uh, you know, maybe I would honor <laughs> Brian the way he lived and not tell the venue and just, hey, boss, a corpse <laughs> in, uh, into, into the stage area. Everyone, go uh, get a drink get a now. We're about in. to do the prayer. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you shout, "Rise up, rise up!" Uh, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, we're, we're chanting, "Rise up, rise up!" Uh, uh, at this also, point, also, assuming this is happening, <laughs> what expectation does anybody have of like? Have you ever been to an open casket funeral in which somebody tried to like, "Hey, bro, let's get a chant going, rise up"? Am I right? How great would that be? Rise up, grandpa! Rise up, grandpa! <laughs> I mean, then, to be fair, look, yes, Brian, that has not happened in my life. But also, what a missed opportunity. What if that's all it took? <laughs> well, you shout rise up, and then what happens is Brian bolts upright, bursts out of the coffin. I'm alive! <laughs> so full on screaming and shouting and talking. Yeah, and dancing now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, press pause at this moment. What do yeah. you think the uh, predominant emotion <laughs> coming over the audience is? Like in waves as they uh, go Brian, through. Brian, I'll, I'll tell you what it will be. A jaunty honky tonk fun when you introduce the possum posse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just pitching this as an idea. Just a thought. It's already been field tested for us. That's the beautiful thing. I, I, oh my God, you're telling me somebody did this? A South African pastor, he's facing lawsuits over this, over an alleged <laughs> resurrection. A viral stunt by a South African pastor oh, oh, may lead to several God. lawsuits. Oh my God! We're looking at the photo of this guy. He's and where's the pastor's hand, by the way? <laughs> a little low, huh? A secret touch. He's got to touch him in the scroll place. Yeah, in the scroll place. He wants to make sure he's not an imposter. <laughs> Everybody else around is like, in the face, like, Aah! oh my goodness. So, what was the? Uh, I mean, how many people were in on it? And what was the intended outcome? Well, not the funeral directors who are suing him. <laughs> oh my yeah, God! There's a video. This one, uh, uh, there's a video. Uh, uh, there is a video, and uh, uh, the funeral directors are not pleased. They he apparently ran this a uh, 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 a fairly elaborate. Uh, he got like each piece of what he needed from a different funeral home, uh, uh, and then used leverage the reputation of the other funeral homes. <laughs> To get the things that he needed from the other ones, and so that's how he got the casket and the hearse and the graveyard from three different places, uh, and then held this public demonstration. Wait, so th okay, the pastor was not the one who allegedly died. The pastor was pretending no. to cast a spell and reanimate yeah. a corpse. And, and, yeah, it would, yeah, would be you. You'd be the corpse, Brian. Justin would be like the pastor. I'd be the pastor here. And yeah. the possum posse would still be the possum posse. Oh, look at the mouth <laughs> open, too. That's great. Yeah, he's visibly breathing. <laughs> uh, so, so, I, okay, so, so everybody's like, okay, what I love are all the calm faces where everybody's being chill. Like, like uh, they all have to know they're all in on this, right? He's convulsing. I mean, 
Well, you know, in some parts of the world, dead can, you know. Yeah, I mean, look, Bri- uh, Bryce, uh, uh, the the corpse has to settle a little bit. You know, it's uh, 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 the bodies work in strange ways. And I like that he decided that like you you're buried with your mouth open. <laughs> like, uh. I I feel like he turns and he's like, all right, which one of you stuffed them full of those Mexican jumping beans? Yeah. Nothing all says twitching. man of God like a gold wait, plated uh, microphone. Bryce, can you go? Can you go a few seconds back, real quick? Just because apparently uh, Sergeant Pepper is there. <laughs> 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 man in a Sergeant Pepper's well, uniform. And, okay. Uh, what are the people who are mad about this mad about? Uh, yeah, yes, it's disrespectful. Yes, it's manipulative. Yes, it is. Uh, it is unkind to the emotions of people who thought that this person was dead. But, like, in general, are you saying, like, I like my dead people to stay dead. Thank you very much. Uh, so so there there are a few things here, and this this, this did go viral. Number one, uh, the funeral homes are now suing him, which, by the way, uh, if you think you're getting a dime out of somebody that <laughs> tries to resurrect people, uh, you know, for his church, then uh, congratulations. Like, you are never seeing a dime of any money that uh, you believe he owes you. Uh, for reputation. I, well, I think for them, just filing the lawsuit enough is for them to separate because they're, right. they're for them. It's like, no, like, Ryan, like it's not that they're not against resurrection. I think they just like they like their dead people to be, you know, dead, actually dead. The the other the other problem here, according to some of the uh, articles that I read about this, is that uh, <laughs> there are church scams and and pastors like this that it's it's more of a real problem than yeah. uh, you, what one might hope, and and that, you know, uh, go ahead and take. Remember all those uh, uh, stories that we uh, we learned in the in the uh, uh, dangerous world of comedy documentary. About, right, right, right. Like like stuff can escalate in very very dangerous places, uh, uh, and that's before we even get to just scam money, which which definitely happens here as as well in in America where. You know, r- religious games can just fleece, uh, uh, you know, the poorest among us. Is, or, is there a the, cultural element of feasibility to this that makes it possible in that area that it wouldn't wouldn't be, say, in you know Norway or whatever? What well, you know, there's as you study beliefs around the world, you know, we all have our blind spots, and certainly in, in countries that have, you know. All less critical media. Well, well, and specifically, I'm thinking about like we spent a lot of time chuckling at all the appearance of goblins out there, but then we found out that mm-hmm. that culturally, the word goblin means something a little bit different. Doesn't well, like possessed, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, I I think it's you know it, it's and that's thing we try to be aware of here is like and is that we go <laughs> look at these people over there. Look at our newspapers from 20, 30 years ago, and then think what are what are things now or things we get obsessed with and. You know, and we have, we, we have satanic panic, you know, things like this that cost real lives and stuff that happens here. And there are probably things right now that are more sophisticated, but yet prey upon the same vulnerabilities. So, you know, uh, I think, but yeah, it is, it is a less, less critical environment. It's less, you know, less sophisticated, that, harder to get the word out. But, you know, I, I, I went to a friend's house. They lived in, um, uh, Parkland, actually, uh, and uh, the, his very their family, you know, was pretty well off. Father was in business. The mom was a nurse. You know, very, you know, the nice house, nice big family. You know, I walked in the door one day, and there was this big, giant wooden pillar, big giant wooden pillar, and I'm like, I turned to my buddy, like, what, 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 what's this? And there's like a candle on top, like, oh, my mom's psychic gave that to her. I'm like, like gave gave it to her, like yeah, like oh, so there's never been an exchange of money. He rolls his eyes. Well, yeah, and like she spends tens of thousands of dollars or more on this psychic, you know. And this family is affluent. They're in a very nice neighborhood. They're all educated, you know. And she's spending, you know, tons of money. And the mom was a smart woman. She was a very smart woman, but she just fallen in for this yeah but but i think i can imagine or let me put it this way i don't know whether this is true with this case or not but i can imagine a situation where for whatever reason there's a severe negative stigma in a certain family about going to a therapist or a psychologist or whatever uh and that but going to a psychic is fine and so 
yeah, but I mean, but they're, you know, claiming to get, you know, things about the future. And here, let's look at anti-vaxxers, you know, a great example of, of and, and, you know, that rationale is based upon, you know, pseudoscience, but it has the veneer of being, I'm, I feel this way because of science. And so I said, that's an example here of how, like, you know, we can go laugh, oh, all those people over there and this, but no, I can't, I don't. And it's this overwhelming scientific evidence. I'm going to let my fear let me select which well, and, pieces that I'm listening to or not. At some point, in, you, you know, you enter that religious territory where what you're really doing is you're entering a shared uh, community of people who have a shared set of cultural values. And it happens to be uh, uh, hinged upon, you know, what turned out to be a, a totally fraudulent study. But it's like... Uh, that's where logic breaks down and it's like, well, I would like to remove this pin of this study that you guys have all uh, rallied around and everybody thinks, but I love my connection to these people. I love that we talk about our autistic children together. I love all these things. It's like, I cannot let you pull that pin out because I am afraid that everything will be torn asunder. But but also too that it's, the belief it's also based on more than the 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 Wakefield study, which got totally debunked. There's there's other reasons to it, and so they'll be like, well, that study, but you see, and there's that that other thing, and you're right to like, there's a reason for why they're they're the the group cohesion, but there is, you know, it's like talking to a flat earther. You know, you have to realize flat earthers, the 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 main takeaway from their belief system isn't the Earth is flat. It's that there's this massive con massive conspiracy around the world to hide information from us. Right, and, and, and that's kind of the beauty. That's why I almost feel like Flat Earth is a stronger or more robust, possibly anti, uh, maybe not anti-fragile, but a more robust thesis because what it really asks is, do you feel like there's more out there than you're being told? Do you, you feel people, like yeah. the media lies to you and that that's why oh, yeah. you're disenfranchised and upset and blah, 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 blah. Great. You're a flat earther. What does a flat earther mean? It means whatever you think it means. It's 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 a, a big old amorphous blob for you to project your piece of the puzzle on there. And, and that's I, I've, I've always thought of flat earth as not. I don't think somebody wakes up and says, oh, I think the earth is flat. It's usually a Voltron of kind of other uh, conspiracies and fears that then get put together and and flat earth then becomes the lie that has been protected the most the yeah. big a lie literally as big as the earth that has been kept from you because there are these other elements that you are putting together and yeah. plus also like i can almost see joining that movement as sort of a badge of pride where it's like are you somebody who loves challenging even the most fundamental core things do you love yeah. seeing other people twist upside down and get red faced frothing in the mouth trying to explain to you the most rudimentary things and do you love having a litany of shotgun counter arguments to everything and just watch them go nuts i i, I think that's the and, game and they're playing the, for the record part of that is a different fork of the dna of this very show because the, the you know, part of the dna of this very show was three guys that were coming from a skeptic perspective that were like hey can we stop being so hard ass about like bigfoot and ghosts and stuff like that let's just understand why these legends are cool and interesting and exciting and let's let's explore them and talk about them we can we can have fun with them without uh uh you know uh, saying that this is scientific fact and real like we we were taking a a, a truth in our community and and subverting it uh, and, and and questioning the questioners. Yeah. So we're all on board, right? Earth is flat, vaccines flat are bad, and a... resurrection is <laughs> happening. BRB going to go die. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you who's going to die. Uh, your soul, if you don't give us money. Patreon.com slash weird things. You can give us a, a, a coin, man. Uh, 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 here's the deal. You, you keep this show rolling uh, at patreon.com slash weird things. You get yourself a custom RSS feed so you can get uh, uh, our After Things podcast where I'm uh, we will uh, certainly open the, the, the kimono on everything that we uh, uh, put together for the South by South Wasted event. Any questions that you guys have about your own businesses, we love to talk about on After Things. And you get it first if you are a patron. So head on over there right now, patreon.com slash weird things. So, you know, Toto did this song, you know, The Rains in Africa, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got to rewrite it. Got to redo it. Wait a minute. Hold on. But but it's uh, they just uh, some random dude put a bunch of Ikea furniture in the desert and set up a whole thing like, like that. That would be really inconvenient. 
Wrong place. Wrong place. Know where he needs to move that furniture to? Where? Where there's water and it's not quite rain, but it's moving. The moon. Oh! The moon. I blaze the rains down in the moon. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of like. You know, sea of tranquility. <laughs> uh, so apparently, you know, one of the big discoveries we had of the moon was exciting. This is like the last decade. This realization was that there was like in uh, certain parts of the, the moon, like you take one ton of soil, there's like 32 ounces of water, which is dry. Let's get that started. It's like, like that's dry, but it's water. It's still water. More water <laughs> I like the way expected. you say it as if as if it's at a champagne tasting. It's like, it's a bit dry, isn't it? Right. Is this, it's, I, not, I would categorize the moon as a brute. <laughs> we get, the, the, the thing is, is I've been involved in discussions where people were like, ah, yeah, there's, you know, there's water. I mean, I too enjoy a that. spot of like, the bubbly here and again, but my goodness, very dry <laughs> the moon. <laughs> I believe there's, uh, there's a golf ball Done. here somewhere. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's there, but it's just very dry. <laughs> I enjoy the crescent, the waxing gimmicks, if you would. It's got a full, robust, round palate. <laughs> I experienced the terroir of the yeah. craters. Yeah. 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 Have, you, have you tried the new, the, the new uh, the Japanese probe section of the moon? A cheese aftertaste. A Don't you think? You too, Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> so look, we said full partner. We said full partner. <laughs> 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 the food mockery. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just don't want to do it anymore. No, um, oh no! Stop! All right. So the, the very thing is, is that we hear water on the moon, and people are like, "Oh, it's great! We're gonna go there and we're gonna mine it." Like, yeah, you can, but remember, it's like you're trying to go find 32 ounces of water in a ton of soil, which takes a lot of energy, a lot of solar power, a lot of nuclear, whatever, and all that, because it's so what? Dry. <laughs> Dry. Uh, yeah. So, but it's still there. Water. There's. Some water is actually different than absolutely no water, so it's still exciting. This, this, they're apparently they're watching the water forms these globules and they move around. And I'm like, is this like, like, like rain or what are you describing here? But it's a little bit vague, but apparently the so water's moving, moving it, water on the moon. This is me totally speculating of what it might look like, but uh, you know, it gets hot on the surface of the moon when you're staring directly at the sun, right? So if sure. there if there is uh, water droplets or or, or sorry uh, uh, nodules or globules of of ice, um, when the, when the sun hits them they would sublimate, and uh, uh, then when the sun goes away they would uh, what uh, 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 form ice crystals again and then fall back to the moon. So it would be kind of a, a form of precipitation. Yeah, and it, it's they find that the water sort of ends up collecting in shadowed parts of craters. So, you know, it's a very interesting thing that it's like it apparently it moves to, towards colder, cooler places or that's where it ends up settling or collecting there. So, so a, the, uh, these would be, I guess, um, uh, I mean, at first uh, on the surface, but then uh, eh, I don't know. Uh, it, it, the good news is, obviously, uh, we, we rather need water. And uh, the more places it is, the better for humans to get out of our Petri dish and well, head on out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out there a crazy thing to think about, is that one of the features that is well theorized, poorly understood, and not a lot of direct evidence of, is the number of <clears throat> potential massive like large caverns in the moon, because of from early activity, volcanic activity, whatever, there could be very large caverns, large, large, large structures under, you know, on the under the moon's surface, right? You know, some people think you could have chambers as big you're as talking, the city of Philadelphia. Uh, What's that? You're talking specifically about the lava tubes that we've that we've talked about before, or is there a different? Well, Mars, form Mars of them? has those, and the moon, yeah, moon has those too. Could have those, and there could be ones like we've talked about. Is big enough to hold the city of Philadelphia? With this knowledge now, though, what that may imply is there might be a mechanism where water collects. Oh, wow. So so, so then it becomes at, a matter of prospecting where it's like, okay, figure all across uh, the moon, maybe, maybe let's say 10,000 lava tubes. I mean, you know, non-zero chance that one of them just happens to be a place that a lot of water has collected. And so if you're going to pick one spot out of the entire moon to colonize, you, you end up, you know, getting down there, heating it up, 
got yourself a little ocean, uh, make yourself a little Philadelphia with the river and all. Yeah. So like if, you know, Bryce just pulled up on, uh, Wikipedia, which was a photo of what they, it's a lunar pit crater that, that looks to be like, if you have lava tubes, the way you sort of find them is periodically, you know, the ground above collapse inwards. So you're looking at that is on the, and there are these features on Mars and here we are looking at one on the moon. And this is a hundred meter deep pit, 300 feet approximately deep pit. And of course and that's, just, that's an ideal place to just, you know, throw a protective bubble over. You got, you got sunshine, you got, uh, uh, uh water well and when we talk about going back to the moon things like that we want to explore we've never sent a probe into anything other than the surface and we've now finding these places where and you're what we're going to find under there is going to be very different because it's shielded from the you know the you know the solar rays it's you know it's going to have you know it's going to have temperature but it's going to you know it's going to have a more steady climate inside of there and who knows you know what what sort of phenomena could be taking place there do, do we know how they found out about the, the the water on the moon? What was the the, the technical method? Was it just a, a, a squinting real hard? We're using new satellites with new new methods. They're able to probe using different sort of you know infrared bands, et cetera, things like this, and Wait so you can minute. pick up the suit. How, how many? When, when you say satellites, you mean satellites around Earth, or are there lunar satellites? Like I have no idea how many lunar satellites there are. I have no idea how many Martian satellites there are. I mean, outside of the um, natural satellites. Well, we can see. Uh, so, uh, Justin, do you have a guess? How many lunar satellites there are? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to go uh, Baker's Dozen. Yeah, we've got, uh, we'll go let's to see what's three. currently present. There's two Chinese. Um, then we have, uh, there's the Longjiang, which is a Chinese one. Chang, Artemis, we have Artemis 1, Artemis 2, which are in orbit right now around the moon. And uh, to study effects of solar wind on lunar surface, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we've got, America's got two, China has uh, two orbiters right there. So, and then we've got, you know, um, so yeah, there that's, you know, and active. And then, of course, you know, the, the NASA's next big mission is they want to do the Lunar Gateway, which is basically a space station in lunar orbit, which would allow us to deploy missions to the surface of the moon, which, you know, that's the next big plan after like, you know, instead of you know, a bigger space station around earth, they want to do that next. So that is so, uh, that's so bizarre that, that I never really paused to think about that. Um, I wonder, I wonder how many other satellites around other planets. Uh, oh, here, here's a question. Uh, yeah, you think we got satellites? <laughs> this is a game called How Ignorant of NASA Missions Are We? <laughs> like, I, I hadn't really paused to think, like, do we have satellites orbiting Venus as well? Probably. Not that I'm aware of. I think Mars and Moon are the only ones we have that. Okay. All right. On an ongoing basis. Yeah. I mean, we certainly, like, uh, I remember that it was a big deal back in the 90s that, uh, that, that we were able to run around enough times to map Venus, but I guess there's not much of a point in keeping it going. Yeah, we'll pull up our, our missions. To, um... Apparently, as far as uh, detecting the water, one of the satellites, the Lyman Alpha Mapping Project, uh, took uh, ultraviolet imagery from 2009 to 2016 and noticed daytime variations uh, showing a tiny amount of water molecules migrating around the moon based on temperatures. So we still have in orbit around Venus, the Venus Express. Um, the Japanese had a probe, didn't reach orbit around Venus. So as far as what's there, uh, Magellan was there, and then it, it deorbited. It burned up in the atmosphere. Um, <laughs> flybys. Uh, like whispering so we don't hurt its feelings? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one is sensitive. It had one job. So we probably have we have several that are dead in orbit around there. Man, know. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. NASA's trying hard. Like, hey guys, look at all this amazing stuff we're doing. <laughs> I know. mean, and again, like NASA, calm down. You're gonna get to do even more amazing stuff. Yeah. You're just gonna have to yeah. use these off-the-shelf rockets to do it. Well, when you look at like. Uh, some of the probes we've been sending to do, you know, flybys of, of asteroids and stuff, when you see the size of these things, I got to stand next to one of these things. It's bigger than a cargo truck. 
You know, and you're like, this is like a spacecraft. This is, you think a probe, I'm thinking, that's ah, a couple coffee cans stuck together, an antenna, maybe, you know. You look at the size of this thing, you're like, this thing is huge, huge. <laughs> so, um, it's amazing stuff. You know what else is amazing? Hey, what's that? Um, you guys want to go to race? Want to go to race? <laughs> yeah, I'm already sure. racing. Yeah. All right. So I, th- I think we're going to do like a 5K. Does a 5K sound good? Oof. Uh, I think I can make it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. We can I, I run, a, run a 5K. I mean, how, 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 how many how many Ks? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, sure. I could do five. We're going to do it in Memphis. We're going to do Memphis. We'll do Memphis 5K. Mm, sorry. I've only been walking in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to back your play on that one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no no side, side glances I'm, I'm allowed. Going- so confident in that one, I wanted to let it sit as long as it was going to. So we're doing a 5K in Memphis. Justin's walking it for whatever reasons I don't understand. Doing don't 5Ks in Memphis. <laughs> um, Think about water on the moon. So y'all in? Y'all in on this? Yes. No. That yeah, why not? Me- me- Memphis is a lovely city. So there's only one problem. One tiny little problem. Oh well, I mean that shouldn't be much. I mean it's just one problem, right? Like we we uh, we can solve anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, what could the problem be? Maybe it's cold. I know it snows there sometimes. That's that's fine. I'm, well, I'm not afraid to of... get this podcast by solving Brian's death for fun and profit. Like uh, <laughs> uh, this is this will be a walk in the park. Yeah, your walk joke. I get it. Great touchback. Great comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Do you really feel the way I feel? No. Talk to your friends at the old sketch comedy troupe. Oh, <laughs> no! I hopped on my time machine. You gotta vote him out. Vote him out. No! <laughs> um, so now there's only one little tiny problem. One tiny, tiny, tiny oh. little problem. Yeah, getting to Memphis. That's fine. Uh, I mean, they're not a Southwest city, but we can fly into Nashville, get a rental car, be over there in no time. Yeah. You know. Uh, by the way. Uh, 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 there's, uh, it's also a hub for, uh, uh, the UPS. UPS is, uh, uh, uh headquartered. Wait, in I thought Memphis. it was FedEx. FedEx. It's uh, also headquartered. FedEx, in, the uh, other. Uh, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andrew May just held up a note as if, as if he's being held captive. <laughs> Instead of holding up a newspaper, he scrawled the word because he's muted now. He scrawled the word chainsaw. <laughs> It's back. It's back. To think of it is, I mean, sure, you could think of it, Andrew, as a a a show ruining sound that keeps you from uh, being a part of the program. I think of it as as a, a free taste of Halloween horror nights. You know, you can just get all that. Ambient well, chainsaw sound. I mean, the, the other nice thing is, like, uh, we already got this one unlocked. Can we do a 5K in Memphis? Sure. End of yeah, story, I, right? I, I, I mean, sent Bryce the rest of I've been, like, hitting the mute switch off and on every time I hear it. <laughs> and, they, and they're, like, giggling out there, too, as they chop down a tree. And they're like, chainsaw. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> super loud. Um, so there's only one little problem. What's that? I mean, it could be a problem if you consider it a problem, or it's not a problem. If it's Every not a problem, problem is an opportunity, Andrew. You know, a 5K, I imagine, would be very boring. After a while, you're like, oh, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. Buh. You know, like, great. <laughs> sure. um, hey, it's you. Great, it's you. You want, you want a little, I don't know, like, what was some of your favorite video games from the 80s? Uh, Jungle Hunt. Jungle Hunt. Great suggestion. Do, so, do, uh, do, uh, do 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 so do 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 What's do, one do. of the things you had to worry about in Jungle Hunt? Uh, uh, uh the alligators and them fish and and not catching that next vine. You had to grab that vine. Yeah, vines are fine. Yeah, look at that Jungle Hunt. Oh yeah, you were swimming, right? <laughs> wow, I, I remember this game much more clearly than I than I thought I did. <laughs> Yeah, trying to avoid a boulder. Uh, well, that oh, savages. Uh, ooh, that didn't age well. Yeah. yeah. What Jungle Hunt could have used? What? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like, uh, man, what was my favorite? It was like Montezuma's Revenge. Oh, on the uh, uh, on the uh, Apple IIe. 
Yeah, what was, you know, one of the things you had to avoid there was... Oh, no, I'm thinking of Aztec. Uh, well, I mean, I guess... Wait. Yeah, I know. Montezuma's Revenge. I think there were snakes. Snakes? Oh, oh, I forgot which podcast we're doing. Yeah, uh, wait, there can't be any snakes in Memphis, not on the streets where we're doing a 5K. No, absolutely we're, not. We're going through the woods, boys. Forgot to tell you that. We're going through a nature park. That's fine. Some people who were uh, laying out cones, planning out this 5K, setting them down, looked over and noticed... Hey, what's that? Uh oh. It's been kind of a soggy day. Was it an awakening pit of snakes? Pretty much. Spiders? Oh, oh, my God. God. A three foot long, long... Snake snakes out prime 5K spectator spot on tree before <laughs> Memphis Rays. This is a massive, massive <laughs> snake. It says three foot. That looks like three meters, but maybe, maybe the tree's smaller than I than it. Per, I perceive it. I as. also believe that the story is that there were two snakes. Yeah, one's a rat snake. This is a rat snake, I think. Mm -hmm. And the other was a copperhead. Yeah, I believe. I mean, I'll tell you what. If you want motivation to run faster <laughs> on your five k, that's almost like juicing. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so one of the Facebook posts that the park posted about uh, in response to this said, the rat snakes are non-venomous and help keep ro the rodent population in check. So even though they are large and intimidating to look at, they are a beneficial member of our ecosystem. Copperheads are also native to our area, and although they do carry venom, they're not aggressive unless provoked. Uh, are copper uh, copperheads deadly? My dog got bit by a copperhead and seemed okay. But I don't, I don't, I don't think they're deadly. It like can a be fatal, but it's not the most. But yeah, they're hey, they're not aggressive. You know, when five thousand humans come marching through their territory, <laughs> it's like, it's like it's if there right. is one thing that's going to yeah. turn them aggressive, it's going to be five thousand humans running at them, going rah, 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 rah. <laughs> all that bear exposed flesh of the legs. Uh, that's terrifying. That is a horrifying uh, sight to see. Uh, Brian, would you ever want a, a, a snake that size in your house? Like if one of your daughters really, really wanted a snake? Uh, no. Like a pet snake? Not, not so much. Although uh, Josie is a big fan. She's got lizards. So she, uh, she's uh, astonishingly good at, at, at feeding them. They've been around for like half a decade now. What if I were to tell you that she also really, really wants to get a snake? Did she tell you that she wants a snake? Yeah. Spoiler alert. Hmm. I mean... Uh, wouldn't be the most off-brand thing we've ever done on this podcast <laughs> is to get an official <laughs> mascot. To get mascot, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, 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 we're waiting for the point guard of the podcast to keep things going. Hey guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's going. Hey, how about picks, Brian? Uh, do you have any picks you'd like to you'd like to pick up? Uh, hey man, uh, 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 go see that Captain Marvel. It's a movie. And then, then we can talk about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, geez, how much do we... I didn't like it. I didn't like Captain Marvel, and I didn't think it was a very good movie. I would prefer to have no public opinion on it, but I agree with Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you, but there's a chainsaw by my window, so I can't really... <laughs> uh, um... I mean, like, I don't want to take joy from anyone who derived a lot I'm, of joy I'm, from it. Here's the problem. I literally did nothing but put on multiple shows and go see Captain Marvel since we last did this program. <laughs> so, like, I, I've spent, like, from Tuesday on, we were doing either Night Attack shows or guesting as Night Attack or setting up Night Attack uh, uh, stuff. So uh, uh, I did not get a chance to see a lot, uh, but I did see Captain Marvel. It wasn't my favorite. I'm excited for Endgame. Let I want to. I'm going to make. I'm going to speak on behalf of everybody. I don't think anybody will disagree with me here. Yeah. Our attitude is this: if you like a thing, we don't like. Then we're glad you like a thing. You're not wrong to like a thing. You can like a thing for different reasons. So if you like the a thing, maybe a movie or something like that, then good. We all kind of wished we were you. <laughs> well, I, I look, there, there's uh, in general, it's not a movie that I have a lot of joy it's not like rogue one where i was i was just specifically cheesed off about a lot of things that were very nerdy arguments that i enjoyed having uh this is one of those movies that i don't have a lot of i mean if if we were to get into a conversation about why i was not a fan of it i, I have very boring reasons why i was not a fan of it there's one very nerdy reason 
that I that did irk me a little bit, but it's a spoiler in the movie, so I look forward to having that conversation in a few months when everybody sees it. Yep, that's a good way to put it. Although I don't think it's I don't think it's a spoiler to say that in general, you know, superhero movies are a bit like video games where you want them to be powerful, but there is such a thing as an overpowered hero, and that's a problem that they've dealt with multiple ways in Superman, where it's like make sure to have a kryptonite thing, make sure to make it not about the story of how powerful he is, but instead make it a you know tell an immigrant's tale of uh, coming to love the United States and becoming all American USA, even though you're an alien or whatever. Those are interesting. Um, you know, figure out a, a way to make them weak and then strong or whatever. But in general. Like uh, my my two biggest beefs are um, uh, uh, just the world had no consequences and I would have preferred to ever be scared for literally anything to happen. It's actually funny that you brought up Superman because I do I watching the movie. I'm like, oh, this is falling into a lot of the problems that Superman movies tend to have, which is that my least favorite Superman movies, unless they're going to be very big and fun and charming, like uh, uh, the ones in the 80s, like the Donner films were. the, my least favorite ones are where Superman's very powerful, and then at the very end, he's going to do something that involves how powerful he is, uh, except this time he's going to really struggle and then squint, and then his power will be enough that he'll be able to do the thing that's <laughs> or, or hard. Tell tell a story where, oh, wait, what do you do if how powerful you are doesn't solve the problem, which was the, great, the, the very first Donner Superman, where it's just yeah. like you can only save one. You can save uh, uh, this or that. Uh, that's interesting, and, and uh, 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 there's an unfortunate lack of anything like that in, in Captain Marvel. Uh, yeah, I, I have no public opinion, but I'll take your word for it. But, uh, <laughs> I agree with your word, and I'll take it. I'll, you, I'm glad you're saying it and tweeting it right after we left the movie. <laughs> I certainly uh, don't want to do that because I have no interest in having the cultural conversation that everybody else wants to have about this movie. Uh, zero. Man, I'll oh, tell you what. My favorite I, and, scene and, was and when she... saying that he has two picks that he wanted to get to. <laughs> <laughs> One is a chainsaw. Oh no, oh, there are two, two chainsaws. chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> Chainsaws. Uh, I've got a pick. Oh, good. I've got a pick. Yeah. Um, I think I might have talked about this. Oh, I only. I think this was just in the after talk on Cord Killers. But uh, we um, had a guest on Cord Killers who who reminded me that the show was out. Uh, it's a, a new YouTube Premium original show, Weird City. It's uh, uh, from uh, uh, Jordan Peele and uh, uh, oh one yeah, of the, one of the head writers from Key and Peele. And I I really enjoyed it. This you know it was six like half hour uh, like anthology little stories set in a shared city where there's a a, a haves and a have nots. There's like literally a border like an immigration border between uh, between the the upper class and the lower class. And the the only thing I didn't like about it was how positive it was from the beginning because I kept having to stop and think like why is this is not dystopian and like super 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 like heavy or i was waiting for it to turn uh but i i really dig it it's it's a super quick watch and is is it it, is it better to know that that's never coming or does it come it's better to know that no it is better okay so so it's it's more it's gonna be positive this is not orphan uh or uh, it's not black mirror Mirror. this is key appeal correct and uh and and so it's it's cool. There's a lot of uh, a, a lot of big names attached to these different episodes. Lavar Burton is in almost every single one of them. He's oh, like nice. a central figure in the city, um, and it's it's goofy and it's wacky, and and that's where a lot of the the humor comes from. Inst- like where because Black Mirror is very much like this is a very likely thing that could happen given technology we know about. Where this is all goofy and and jokey stuff. So. Uh, if you have YouTube Premium, I recommend Weird City. You probably can watch the first episode for free. The first episode is very cute. Your first episode is almost too cute. I don't think it should have been the first one, but Weird City. Oh. Yes. That, was, that was a real up and down, <laughs> positive <laughs> thumbs up. I was like, like, I was, no, okay. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good. <laughs> my pick is uh, my Bose in-ear noise-canceling <laughs> headphones. <laughs> Wait, do you have the same ones that Brian has? Uh, Brian's his neck brace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian, the dog Brian's collar. Got the dog collar. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that he uses to give Lando Calrissian help when like the Empire's <laughs> taken over. I, I'm, I'm Lobot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. So uh, that's that's my pick. Um, Which ones so. do you have? I don't know. The ones that go in your ear, the noise canceling. Um, uh, uh, um, cool. Just uh, general uh, Bose headphones. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just <laughs> I don't know they are. Uh, but they're good. It, noise canceling headphones are great if you want to focus and you want to tune out the world. It is. I love them for airplane flying for you. As you know, anybody who has them, when you fly, it's a very different experience with noise canceling headphones. And the in ear are great because they're not bulky. <laughs> And it's easier to sleep with them. So. Oh my God, uh, they are uh, gods ambien. <laughs> the the, <laughs> the uh, ability to cancel noise coming into your ears will make you fall asleep so much faster on an airplane. And it, the the price is steep. I remember going, ah, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks on headphones. It's like, nope. It's a private little room. It's a little private room you get to take everywhere. It's like a little TARDIS for your ears. You just pull it out and put it on, and the next thing you know. You're in a very different world. Uh, yeah, t- take it from uh, a, a lot of folks who have done a lot of traveling. Uh, if 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 the difference is you get any sleep, it's never going to be good sleep. But if you get any sleep in a time when you really need it or want it, that's crucial. And also, man, if you're on planes a little bit, it helps to have that fast forward button to just get you to the end of whatever uh, hours you're up in the sky. Yep. Uh, gentlemen been very loud <laughs> i gotta go check out this ice sculpture that's making up <laughs> yeah exactly i'm sure there's a swan a beautiful swan awaiting you outside <laughs> oh right. man all right great well uh, we can take a few minutes if you guys need a refresh uh, i'm gonna go take a peek outside see how long yeah, this is gonna go no, on go ahead. <laughs> i'm gonna make sure i i'm not trapping bonnie in uh, oh okay yeah hey bro hey justin Hey man, what's going on? Oh, you know. Uh, oh, there we go. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what head? Do you know what headphones you use on on airplanes? I I know. I think I know the ones that I have. I use I use uh, the. the I B-tops. actually need to start bringing my. Uh, I, I I forget what. I need to connect on my phone to Skype. I'm sorry to interrupt. I gotta show you what's going on outside. Oh, so sure. Disconnect your call me back. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, because uh, uh, I use because uh, I know you had the BTX too for a minute. I, I I did, and I'm gonna have to go back to something that is over my ear for oh. uh, uh sleep or for for plane use. Yeah. Because as great as the AirPods are, and I have loved the AirPods. The AirPods are the first Apple product in many many years that I felt have have kind of revolutionized where the, that field in a way that nothing else really has. Yeah. They're by far the best, best Bluetooth I've ever had. <laughs> not good for me falling asleep on an airplane and falling into the crevice next to me. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. We've got Andrew on the line. Let me uh, reverse this here. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you can do uh, horizontal. <laughs> oh, they're, tr- they're tree trimming. <laughs> oh, my God. So there is the that are now climbing this tree and they are sawing branches off. I don't know, this is like a six exposing crew. Wow. Uh, they are sawing through just very thick branches. Like they are molding this into a Disney style topiary. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Well, okay, we're gonna we're gonna stop showing personal. Well, yeah. Right. Now we're giving everybody Andrew feet footage that they've been asking. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I really like the. Uh, I I always like the ear pods that that come with the phone, the iPhones, and yeah. so <laughs> I think sooner rather than later, I'll probably get the AirPods. Maybe when they put the new ones out and these first ones go, go get a little more cheaper. Um, yeah, I mean, because uh, uh, I I like the Beats X, but they're in ear, and I don't like the in ear stuff. That hurts my ears oh, after a long time. So number one, uh, I, I'm I'm I can take or leave the in ear stuff. Uh, uh, I tend to think that it it le- makes it harder for me to go from I'm listening to something to I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, but that's the biggest thing with the AirPods. The AirPods is just like the, the two things that you cannot understand how good it is is how fast mm-hmm. it connects to your phone, right. how easily it connects to your laptop if you're using a Mac, and uh, how impressive and awesome just being able to take them out of your ear and having your podcast stop. Yeah, it, that, that, them that turning on and off 
fundamentally life changing. Like yeah. to not be worrying about hitting play, hitting pause, yada yada yada. On- honestly, uh, I mean, the the bet like I I like the Beatex because they're corded, so you can still just wear them around your neck. But they, that means they don't turn off automatically. Yeah. And, but if I ha- if they made a version of the Beatex that had the AirPod ends or just the pod yeah, ends. But I mean, I up here. But here's the other key is with the AirPods is having the little dental floss case yeah. means that they last way longer than than the Beats X because you're always topping off. Yeah, because it's every- like up to 24 hours in the case and they and, will hold up to like five. So, and effectively, yeah. So even if you're cranking for, you know, five hours straight, sure. you can put them in there and they charge super fast. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the, the Beats have that same fast charge too. You can get like two hours and 15 minutes or something. But you don't have a thing that you can just like turn on charging mode in, in, in a similar way. Yeah. All right, here, I'm going to take it. Okay. Uh, I parked behind you, but I figured that's fine that's since fine. you're well, not going to go anywhere during the show. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> you're like, what are you trying to trap me in this gig? <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> you pull the ripcord, you fly away. <laughs> oh, how was uh, how was your time after the, the Saturday show? Because we end, I ended up I didn't make it out to Casino El Camino with you guys. Oh man, I, uh, I know Bonnie Bonnie got kind of stuck. Or was that kind of the end of the night for you guys? That, yeah, that ended up being it. it, it oh. um, you know, we we were we were trying to summon all that energy to to, to go you know bar hopping with everybody else, yeah. and then Bonnie, uh, like I was first in ca- Casino El Camino, and then Bonnie had the awkward moment of realizing that the idea she, was uh, gone. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and then. You know, and then and then you know she was holding up uh, uh, Justin and Ashley, and so there's that that brief moment where it's like, well, what's happening? Are you are you bailing on me or not? I was like, no, let's go find your la- your, right. your, your uh, uh, ID, and then you go to the first place and you don't find it, and the second place you don't find it, and then you just sort of are just like, wow, we'll just uh, <laughs> yeah. wrap it on, up. <laughs> you know, because I mean, plus it's like as great as that was, man, what a draining night. I mean, there's just, yeah. just and and the week leading up to it and all that stuff. So basically, uh, we were we were, we were smart enough to quietly go home and go immediately to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what was that? Uh, oh, uh, we're just uh, uh, our post uh, uh, self by so wasted Saturday night uh, evening when. Uh, <laughs> uh, where, where did you end up? How long you guys were at Casino El Camino for a minute? Casino El Camino, and then we uh, we're gonna attempt to go to Floppy Disk, and uh, then saw that there's a line for Floppy Disk. Yeah, uh, they must they get when they get swamped, it's bad because that place only holds a couple dozen people. Yeah, and so we were like, well, we could just go to Handlebar. And By handlebar- the way, talk about flipping the script. It used to be Handlebar was always jumping, and that's what was great about having a little secret that you could go to Floppy Disk Repair Company. Uh, I'm done keeping that secret because now that place is uh, not not private and not quiet and not a little retreat. It's the loud, annoying thing that is a pain in the ass to get into. Well, certainly during festivals. Uh, yeah. You know, like. But that was also like, like I remember in the early days, like even during South by Southwest, it it was cool to have that secret and yeah. and jump over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, we we pretty much just did a a drink at Handlebar, and then uh, and Ashley me. Ashley was wisely my my savior, who was like, we need to remove you because you have to be fresh at ten o'clock the next. Day. So yeah. uh, it's funny how that kind of like resource management thing becomes so important in social situations. Um, somebody whose name I won't mention uh, was describing <laughs> the move with a celebrity friend of his uh, uh, that uh, uh, we're <laughs> oh yeah 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 the day that I met of course Tom Cruise <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah sure let's say it's Tom Cruise uh, <laughs> a friend of Tom Cruise on Tom Cruise's podcast uh, I happen to bump into uh, and uh, Tom Cruise's friend was talking about how Whenever he sees Tom Cruise talking to someone, Tom Cruise is too nice to just, you know, leave. So he'll, what he'll do is just casually walk behind the person to whom Tom Cruise is talking and then, as, and then look at Tom Cruise. And if Tom Cruise glances up for even a casual second, uh, then, then, uh, friend of Tom Cruise knows to say, 
uh, oh, hey, Tom, uh, we've got to go make another movie right now. Oh, <laughs> and then wow. drag him off. Uh, but if, if Tom Cruise doesn't even lift an eyebrow or look up a, a casual glance, then he knows that Tom Cruise is, is good. definitely good to continue this conversation. Wow. You know, a good check thing to practice, though, is just the, hey, it's great to meet you. I have to go. Thank you so much. You know. uh, yeah, you know, it, it is, it, you know, it's 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 definitely a tricky thing uh, when you're when you're when you're dealing with the crush, the crush of folks. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's good to have that person who does that, and I've done that for people, <clears throat> Tom Cruise, um, uh, <laughs> not really, but, yeah, but I've done that too. Like I have friends, wait, like not, I've been not there. Zero chance that Andrew has done that for. Tom. Yeah, but and it, but it, but it's also it's like the thing I've learned too is like on the other side of it, it's like I've just said, you know what, like some of my. You know, one of my favorite things was like, I still love this to this day. Howard Stern's interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day when Howard Stern hadn't, you know, was still a rising, you know, talk radio guy. Arnold was doing some press thing, you know, some press conference in New York or something like this. And they they wanted to get a question. They couldn't. And then Arnold goes into the toilet. <laughs> so Howard Stern and his sound guy are like, all right. They follow him into the bathroom. And Howard Stern's like, hey, Arnold, uh, can I ask you some questions while Arnold's sitting on the toilet? And he just, you know, Howard Stern describes what must have been like, you know, an Austrian side, whatever. And they hear Arnold goes, sure, go ahead, boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, oh! Interviewing him through the toilet, and they're like, Howard was just starstruck with the fact that Arnold, like, we you know, well, it was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they didn't do a live recording, or at least didn't air a live recording. But, but they I did. don't, I don't know. But I mean, like, that's power. I mean, that is, that is, that was part of what made Arnold. Arnold was like so alpha. Alpha is like he could like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a dump and do this interview with you. <laughs> So, all right, I uh, I think we're good here. If you're good to do after things, totes. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yep, well, yep. Take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. Justin Robert Young. Oh, hi, friends. What's happening? Brian Brushwood. Uh, yo ho. <clears throat> So, gentlemen, you had a little event last week. Yeah. South by South Wasted? What? What's this? South by South So by Wasted. Wasted. Yeah. Yeah. South by So Wasted, which will be the name of that franchise until we get an inevitable cease and desist. Yeah, so. found out that's a thing. Somebody Ooh. knows some lawyers who has to, uh, mm. uh, 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 they, they've not yet, we've not yet attracted uh, anyone's attention. Yeah, no. We've heard rumors. We can neither confirm nor deny those rumors. We just heard an urban legend that there's somebody that looks for certain uh, phrases, but I, I they never uh, talked to me. I, I didn't know them. All I know is that our fantastic franchise, South by So Wasted 2019, took a tremendous step forward this weekend where instead of doing stuff at a bar, we booked uh, one of our favorite venues in Austin, the North Door, right by the hub of everything in Sixth Street, and we had an amazing three-hour-plus show uh, that included not only a live night attack, but Ice Cream Social, uh, uh, musical performances by the Possum Posse and Dual Corps, and special guests up to and including Tom Merritt, the Whiskey Tribe, and Andrew Heaton, who came all the way down from Dallas. Yeah. Uh, man, it was great. It was a lot, and uh, it, it was so great to see so many people shine. Um uh, Andrew Heaton was was a great surprise. The way he just uh, just slid right in like a finger in a glove, man. He was mm -hmm. he was unflappable and and it was great. Yeah, he he uh, he slotted in like super smoothly and and uh, uh, it, it, yeah, it's it's like um mm, like when with the I don't know you, like yeah you, you already said the thing I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Like a finger into a golf glove because there's less resistance because it doesn't have to push all the way through the thing. Uh, I'm trying no, to think of a metaphor, like, like a like I, a digit or a phalange, like, and, and some <laughs> wrapping mechanism that goes I, I over feel, it. I feel you so much right now, just because we were at the VIP event on Sunday, and he Ooh, at a VIP event. How'd you get in? Uh, <laughs> we hosted it. Uh, but. Uh, uh, Heaton's there with a friend of his and he's like uh, starting a conversation with me about like starting a politics podcast or why I wanted to get into it. And I literally just just 
everything that Bryce said, I, I was just like, well, you know, uh, yeah, politics is crazy because, <laughs> you know, you've got voting <laughs> – uh, and uh, uh, and then I just apologize. I'm just like I'm just I'm sorry. I have not gotten a lot of sleep, and I, I have nowhere to go. I like I like I, honestly, unless somebody's paid for me to talk, I I, I need to conserve the energy. So goodbye. Thank you. You know, in, in in artificial intelligence, like the things, like when you see those, like the predictive text things, it's yeah. called like like it's called like it's branching or whatever long yeah, stem. Yeah. Basically, it's like, and the next word will be this, and the next <laughs> word will be that. It's just guessing what that is, and it's you're like, and that's how you end no. up. With, and then I went to the, and I went to the, and I went to the, and then I went yeah. to. The... Allow myself to introduce. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, uh, uh, this Ugh. was the first time that a few things happened. Uh, uh, we we rented the venue. Uh, we went through all the process of what that was, which is well, wait, wait, uh, back up, back up, back up. All right, here, sure. Yeah. It, it, so you just you just show up and you throw this thing together, right? You just show up. Hey guys, we're gonna do a oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Andrew. Uh, uh, you have to solve for a lot of problems, and and uh, previously the problems that we had to solve for were uh, a venue which we never really had because even if you wanted to do what is very common in Austin, which is tell a venue, Hey, we're going to show up. We're going to bring a bunch of people. They're all going to drink at your bar. Literally all we require is to take your dormant stage and possible PA system. And if not, we can bring one and we'll do a show for an hour. We'll bring people a little drink for much more than that. That's a great bargain. And normally in Austin, that's cool. That's why they have stages because people can play and bring people. The uh, South by Southwest, however, is not one of those weekends because everybody is leaving out the possibility that, you know, a, a, a Xbox will come by and sponsor, throw a party or buy out their bar or do whatever. So nobody wants to lock down their space early. This is, is this is the problem of imaginary money, which mm -hmm. is unlimited at South by Southwest because there are uh, no shortage of stories of, you know, uh, uh, big name, you know, Facebook's coming in, buying out entire sections or whatever. And the last thing you want to do is to have told a, 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 a smaller podcast uh, consortium that, yes, you can have it for this amount of real dollars and in so doing, give up imaginary future dollars. And in the past few years, we've been able to try to stem that off by focusing on, you know, earlier on the day when when less events are trying to happen. Uh, at a, in a different part of town where there are less events just taking place. And non-exclusivity, like mm -hmm. anybody could come. We're not Open charging the public, at the door. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this was a, a, a big change because this was a venue. They had a, a full crew and, and uh, uh, poss possibly, you know, uh, uh, closing out a slot in that like that. And so initially we – it, it, it kind of solves that problem because once you're paying money, now you can kind of uh, at least be sure that something is going to happen. But the, the imaginary money problem was still there as we reached out to venues, uh, including the North Door, and the initial uh, prices that they wanted to offer us were, were far higher than we would have. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. Having now known what we brought in in, in everything that we did, we wound up breaking anywhere between, I haven't done the final math, but anywhere between, you know, maybe $500 and $700 up, right? And, and we'll, we'll figure out as we settle everything out how we're, what we're going to do with that. But uh, if we had gone with the initial quote, we would have been in the hole uh, certainly four figures, if not. Uh, uh, you know, in, into the 2000, 3000 which, range. Which I thought that moment was a pretty good um, object lesson in negotiation skills because you said, hey, we have this thing, we want to do it at this time or whatever. And then they, quite, I mean, do you just want to quote, you, you, you want to talk out of school? Yeah, I can look it up. Yeah. I can yeah. Look it up. So they came back with the number that immediately I was like, so not there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but then, but you realize when it comes to negotiating any of this stuff, um, I, I, a lot of people don't like negotiation, but it's like becoming strong in any kind of muscle. If you can develop that skill, it is extraordinarily valuable because you have more moves than you think. People think your move is yes, no. Uh, hey, I would like to use your venue. Hey, that'll be $5,000. Uh, uh, no. And then that's the end of the discussion. But instead, 
they 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 quoted a number plus a bar guarantee. Uh, yeah. And so we had. Uh, so now the question is like, so here, here's yeah, here was the initial. The initial offer was uh, fifteen hundred for the venue, but also a fifteen hundred dollar bar guarantee. Or which which means which means if however much booze was sold, if, if whatever the difference that, is, we would have to pay out of pocket and make it up. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, and this is not anything to do with the North Door or any of the fine folks that we worked with there. They were an absolute dream, and we wound up coming to a, a number that worked well for us. But I am personally uncomfortable with something like a bar where I'm sure we would have been able to see to you know a, 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 a terminal at the end of the day to see where we came in, but that, that doesn't, you know, I, I want, I want to have a bar. If we're doing a bar minimum, I want to have a number that I'm sure we're going to sail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, uh, so the other, the other uh, side of that was a one K rental with a two K bar guarantee, uh, which was also something that we, you know, and, and part of it wasn't even necessarily that we were for sure that we didn't, weren't going to hit it, right? We, I, I just, we'd never done that before. Like right, we, yeah. we'd never seen how much uh, uh, booze we'd sold. In fact, I probably should send them an email and ask, hey, by the way, how much booze did we sell? <laughs> just so we know in general uh, uh, what we can count on our crowd doing. And keep in mind, what we're doing is, you know, South by Southwest is a, a time when uh, almost everybody who's putting on events is doing it to, because eventually there's, something they're selling. Whereas we're, we're not, we are doing the, the event for the event's sake, mm -hmm. which, um, all things being equal, I would say that in an alternate timeline, if we were to set up a yearly ritual of doing an event, maybe during the most popular, uh, festival in Austin year after year, wouldn't be the best place to pick it. But, uh, there are a number of people who happen to be in town, uh, for that every, every single year, which helps us. Yeah. Well, that's that's a big yeah. That's the 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 pro is, hey, if you're already here, show up here. And I when I've gone there and been there around you, we've met people like who I know like, they're here because they're at South by, but it's also cool they get to go do this. Yeah. But if you do it on your own thing, and then you can then you could do your own thing. If only you had like a massive compound or someplace where that was possible. Working so. on it, working on it. <laughs> well, you know, and that's and that's funny is that. Uh, oh, look at that. Uh, uh, look at that chainsaw sawing through all the mystification of running an event at South by, uh, we, uh, it was interesting to see how the tickets sold because I, uh, we, we had, you know, a, a decent little pop at the beginning and as every element of our bill started to go out and tell their own audience, we saw a fairly steady growth, but, uh, I was kind of surprised that we did not see more last day or walk up. It it almost made me think that that Brian, uh, uh, there there might be something to maybe doing the off weekend uh, uh, experience because oh because because normally you can rely on some number of people like last minute traffic. on a Thursday afternoon saying. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, well, what's there to do tonight? But the answer during South by Southwest is there's everything to do, and it's a very loud environment. And and part of that goes with there are ecosystems of event websites and booking things and getting the word out, street team, all a million I mean, different things, imagine, and a bunch of stuff that we, we didn't have time to put resources into. If it was not South by Southwest, if this was a random Thursday in July, sure. uh, and we had the time, like, we could have – push to be an Austin Chronicle local pick. I mean, this this is a hell of a three-hour event. Uh, yeah. And at the $18 ticket price that, that we came up with, a tremendous value. Uh, but uh, when I think about how amazing it is that we got the place uh, uh, packed out the way we did during this time in this ecosystem, it is truly remarkable. Uh, yeah. So that, and, and uh, uh, you know, really the big key for me was realizing all right well we're, we're gonna do this uh, essentially there were two changes well we had the special guests we had modern rogue doing the you know doing the first modern oh, which rogue. also was was a uh, 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 we could talk about that too the the opportunity to prototype what a live modern rogue show would look like by sandwiching it 
in the middle of, a, much like a variety entertainer or a magician will work on a new bit, they'll make sure it's 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 before and after uh, tried and true tested material so they're able to keep the yeah. entire show going. That opportunity to try to see what a 12-minute performance of a Modern Rogue live stage, stage show mm-hmm. worked out great. Uh, it, 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 I, I thought yeah. it was amazing. It went over really, really well. Uh, no, absolutely. That was that was uh, awesome. Uh, that but photo. the biggest the, the, the biggest difference was making sure that we uh, got an act that we had never had there before, and that was Ice Cream Social. As soon as we were able to figure out what the cost of the flights were, the the next big question was, okay, what's the one thing I know we can do so our nut is effectively covered no matter what. And that was the VIP weekend. The VIP weekend really was the, the economic guarantee uh, for the entire project. As soon as we figured that out, uh, uh, then almost everything was, was possible. You know, that was back when we used to put together the amazing meetings, you know, that was something, um, uh, we put together was just because you had people who want to show up and, you, and and part of the purpose of doing anything like this as you pointed out is it's not a money making opportunity it's kind of paying your dues to your fans and giving them an opportunity to meet you and reinforce that relationship yeah but when you want to make these things pay off is you know there are some fans that are super fans and so you know we would do you know meet and greet with richard dawkins and stuff and you do these sorts of things because you're some people are like hey listen Give me a reason to pull out my checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen the checkbook in here. Give me a reason. Just give me any any excuse so I can just justify it in my head to give you guys just a little more whatever. Just just tell me a reason. And- you know, I remember we did an auction and we auctioned off the fire permit for Penn and Teller because so Penn could do eat fire. And it made like, you know, a hundred bucks. You know, it was just like somebody like instead of saying, Hey everybody, donate, like, no, we have a bunch of useless and fun stuff we're gonna auction and whatever, and people are like, Cool. I have a mental reason to do this now. Uh, and that and that's what, what we wound up doing is knowing that we've built up and this has been a story of night attack for a very long time. Brian's purchasing and selection and emotional roller coaster of the the seven acre Schwood compound. Uh, we were like, OK, well, the one thing that we know we can guarantee is you get to go on the tour. And, and we got some great photos of Brian doing his like. Walt Disney in the orange fields, uh, uh, you know, pointing out into the, the, the you know, what, what's going to happen where, but uh, that you get to go on this tour. And, you know, we, we told some of the, 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 the stories and rumors of, of the property, but that was something that we knew, hey, look, if you're a super fan and you really want to give back, and b- by the way, here's the other secret. We had multiple people fairly early on that were like, let me know what goes unsold. I'll buy it out. Because they wanted a reason to do it, and you have to give people that opportunity. If you don't carve that out, then you are really uh, uh, not allowing the financial flexibility just to get things done. You know, uh, uh, th- this is not again. Like we we have a couple hundred dollars, and that's and that's allowing for the fact that I probably screwed something up math wise, and that's not including all the other times that Brian and I just pulled out our credit card to. Stop gap something. Okay, that, that's that's one quiet. journey I don't want to go on is an actual accounting <laughs> of whether no, or not we I made mean, any money. <laughs> I mean, but but just I mean, because I didn't expense my flight, like I'm not expending my my rental car or anything like that. There's a million ways that we can make this not make money, right? But in terms of the core functionality of it, having that amount of money that at the end of the day, if we do it right, we can go back to some of the performers that perform for free and say. Hey, look, here's a, a couple hundred dollars like bonus, man, that that feels really, 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 really good. Yeah. Uh, uh, as as of right now, I mean, uh, uh, like understand how precious this event was. Everybody who got on stage uh, did, did it for free. We, we all did it for free. All of the money went for uh, the, the venue and, and the, 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 the flights and all of that stuff, which to me, I don't know, only, only makes it all the more authentic and precious, although unfortunately, uh, not sustainable, uh, but <laughs> in the long term, but certainly, uh, for this event and what we wanted to do, like we, we shot for the moon and we, and we nailed it right in its watery eye. Yeah. And look, uh, the, the, the goal here is to keep making it 
uh, uh, bigger. The only reason why there is any money left over right now is just because you want to hold on to a little bit of budget room in case something goes horrifyingly awry, you know, and uh, uh, and you need to go do stuff. And there was even a little bit of that. Uh, uh, on on the Friday before, when we were wondering whether or not it was going to rain on on Sunday, and the next thing you know, we got to run out and buy a bunch of canopies uh, uh, that uh, you know will certainly uh, bear uh, uh, will certainly uh, be be well uh, kept there at the at the compound where there's going to be yeah they'll be, they'll get used for something days. but still right yeah often like I mean a goal for a lot of things is just let me come close to breaking even like you know films and stuff like this because if you you can do do a great event, and then you come out a couple thousand dollars in the hole, and you go, "This is a great event." But then your attitude is like, "Well, I'm never going to do that again." A lot of conventions die because they have a great convention, they do a good first year, people have fun, and they're like, "Oh, when are you going to do it again?" And the organizers like, "I it cost me," you know, like it, sometimes it's just a small amount, but you you lose, and then it's the the energy to do it again is not there, and and it applies to anything like you know filmmaking, short films, projects like this. You want to make sure that. After I do this thing, I'll have the energy and resources to do another thing. That's the biggest thing is understand you're building a button that will either be net money positive or net money negative. And even if it's only slightly net money positive, there's no disincentive to not just keep hitting that button. And, and, and just the faster you hit it, the more you'll you'll get somewhere. So it matters a lot that that we, uh, I, you know, I don't know that, that we cast our sights so high on this one. Sometimes people will, and I've seen this happen with entertainers and stuff. They're like, "Oh, well, I'm gonna rent. I'm gonna rent like a. I'm gonna do like a 400 seat venue because if I sell out every one of those seats, you know, and you're like, you're not gonna do that. You're you're you've you've given yourself this opportunity where if this lottery ticket scratches off, you're gonna make a lot of money there. That's not going to happen. You're gonna find out that you might sell. You you've, you have a lot of people. You might be able to eagerly sell 50 or 60 tickets to people you know, and it's great. And you're gonna have 240 empty seats." And it's going to feel dead. But had you done this in a 60 theater, an 80 seat theater, blown it out. Yeah. it would be a hit. Uh, as a matter of fact, I totally forgot that we live streamed the thing. Gambling Man in the chat was saying that the live stream was great. How, how do we set all of that up? And, and how do you feel about how it looked, Bryce? Uh, so every every time we do a live event, I I always want us to, to try to do a live stream as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year, actually, uh, one of one of the fans approached me. He was like, I'm, I'm coming. I do live streaming uh, as as a gig, and uh, so I'm going to be bringing a bunch of stuff anyway, so if you'd like, I can help set this up. So, you know, it was a matter of just making sure, you know, he and the person he was working with could get in early. He brought his own camera. He even brought his own mobile um, uh, modem thing because the Wi-Fi was was okay, was all right at the North Door, but but apparently not as good as this this Raptor thing he had. And, um, and it, it it was great, you know, uh, that that someone was able to uh, that we were able to have someone dedicated that you know a lot of this this whole event for me had uh, as we've gotten away from doing the you know the 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 show at a bar on a patio right uh, to an actual live venue it's gone from you know uh, hands on teching the show and filming the show to like making sure we have people to tech the show and make sure we have you're, people to film the show. You're directing now. You're, you're live, live producing and yeah. directing. Yeah. Um, and, and so that was, that was the big change for me, for me. And so even though going into it, I knew I wouldn't be, you know, standing up holding a camera for, for four hours. Uh, I was definitely on my feet running around the entire time. Um, oh God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's something that needs to be said is that, uh, there was a lot of momentum, uh, but man, it is, it was great to have, you know, Brian and, and Bryce and, and, and Brant and everybody who's, you know, with the Bizarre Magic Inc. that is is a, a media production crew mm -hmm. that is so used to shooting in such weird and uh, a rough and tumble times uh, and that we've done these little things that it's like, I'm like, yay, we got a venue. So it's like my job is like, oh, I rented a venue. We negotiated a good price and we're doing this other VIP thing. And everybody rolled with it. Like mm -hmm. there there was not... A moment where I'm like, okay, and Bryce, and you'll be live producing, right? It was just Bryce was live producing. Like that's that is yeah. uh, uh, in invaluable because this a show like that that went on time, that uh, uh, finished on time, that that uh, uh, got everybody on, everybody played their hits. You know, there was no time where anybody 
you know, even 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 the modern rogue not being able to douse. <laughs> douse the state. Oh, that was so great! So, that was so uh, modern uh, rogue. Oh, I I have not seen I did not see the actual shooting of the thing out of the bottle from my angle. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, and, and by the way, that was vinegar and baking soda. Yeah, like, and that and that. And that shot somebody right in the face. That got like one row of people. The, right? wo- the woman that it hit, I think she asked me if she was going to get hit. And I think I told her no. And I think she <laughs> definitely got hit the most. I'm so sorry. Well, now, now she knows what a Gallagher concert looks like. <laughs> uh, but but look, I mean, that's that does not happen by accident. That does not happen by just rolling the ball out and, and letting everybody do stuff. Like, there was... I mean, look, th- 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 this was a show. This was one of those, like, you know, people rolling up and they've got questions and they've got concerns and they want to know why they're playing the certain time slot that they're playing. And mm-hmm. uh, we got fans outdoors and you got to think about who's checking tickets, who's taking tickets at the door. Like, there's there's just a lot of elements that, uh, you know, you, you, you have to figure out and work with. And it, it was it was an amazing experience. It was great. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, a question. What are, you, what are you calling the compound? What's its name? You know, it's gone by In many flux. names. Its names are Legion, but I'm recognizing, especially walking around during do, doing the tour, uh, whatever we're going to build there, like, the name is so important because that's sort of the unifying idea. And, and part of it is, you know, I'm extroverting my way through what are all the ways that we're going to use this space and what is a name that, that encaptures all of that. You know, which is one of the, like, for example, our friends over at the Wizard Academy, uh, that is an eyebrow raising name, but it conveys that there's magic and learning and that there is power and that there is a wizard's tower. And it's like everything starts to write itself when you have a name. So the answer is, I, I don't know what we're going to call it, but for right now, we've just been saying the Seven Acre Schwood just because that's funny. Yeah. Like never should ranch. Uh, let's just, uh, we're hey, gonna, Justin, hey, we're going to leave Justin, that idea. you want to try to, you want to try to. <laughs> say public no. say how we're not gonna encourage that talk and then definitely <laughs> encourage that talk <laughs> privately i privately uh, yeah, privately uh, that encourage that schwid world um schwidney land schwid cut schwid cut schwid cut center yeah there there is actually a moment i gotta send you bryce this this picture that we can put uh we can put uh, on on the screen because I was so proud of Brian when he was doing that tour, and just like just <laughs> Dolly Schwood. Dolly Schwood. <laughs> Dolly Schwood. <Schwitt. laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'll hold on to that until we get something better. <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> uh, but how was it giving that tour to everybody? Uh, it, uh did it feel? Cathar- I imagine it must have felt cathartic because there were stories in that that you don't get to tell very many people. Yeah, and and it all to be honest, uh, the the knowing that this VIP event is the financial cornerstone of the entire thing, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it would have been a fine party if an expensive one were it not for the VIPs. Thank you, VIPs. Thank you, all of you, to who, everybody who showed up and stuff. Yeah. But but you know you feel this pressure where it's like. All right, I gotta tell the story in such a way that people years later were like, "I was there." And um, uh, I, I, once once you go into performance mode, uh, after the fact, there's this kind of crippling self doubt about whether or not you did the right thing or not. But but I felt good in the moment mm-hmm. telling all the stories. Uh, the only the only note I gave myself is I didn't begin by pointing out that we're literally on the Austin city limits yeah. uh, on the outside of it, which I thought was a, a, a cool fact. But uh, and it had new, it had a new story, a uh, new story and that they finally started clearing out uh, trees and stuff. And, yeah. and uh, by the way, today was the day I realized I desperately starting uh, should have been starting three days ago, but, but on Twitter, I need to very publicly be telling the story of all of the construction going forward. We need to be posting Mono Rogue videos and all that stuff um, because, like, yeah, yeah. Stuff- By the way, I, I know that you've had a, a an internal question of like, well, what do I post on Twitter now for a million different reasons? There's a million different questions. Well, you know that new sound you're looking for? <laughs> Listen to this, and it's a, a bobcats pushing over. Uh, trees. Like, oh this- wow! Oh what a God. photo! Please send me Look that this. photo. There's Brian in a in a in a dirt field. Oh my God! That's visionary. With the wrath of God. <laughs> 
you will construct. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, is yeah. that your photo, Justin? That was mine, yeah. Oh, please uh, send that to me. That's so great. That makes me really happy. I just sent uh, oh, we got uh, two more, more too, that I really liked. Oh, uh, that's great. Or- God, and it was so much fun, and there was just, you know, and there's also sort of like um, none of us know necessarily. That's over an open, shallow grave. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, th- there was kind of a sense of like none of us knew for sure why we were there, including me, but we knew that it felt right and that there was something special afoot, you know? And, and... I, I, I knew, look, uh, I was there a couple months ago uh, when you had the property, and it was like at night. And and you could hear at that point the pond was was filled up and like walking behind you as you were just talking about the general things that you want to do. I was like, this is awesome. This is a magical kind of moment to to see this at this point. Like as this gets more impressive, you'll always be able to say I was there when and yeah. being able to sell the access to that, even if if Brian, if you and I were just totally hung over and fundamentally useless and it was just us just uh, whatever <laughs> stuff they would always no matter what every time that they saw a video on the modern rogue and they see that that tour bus refurbished and they see the new warehouse and they see the new thing and when the pond is all filled up and there's the first little like party that or a video that gets shot there uh they'll always be able to say i saw that as a crater i saw that uh, the day that the trees got pushed down, I saw that when it was a a husk uh, of a tour bus. You, you know, one of my favorite parts. It's it's in, interesting because when you tell a story, you want to be uh, and whether it's this is true, whether it's in you know cinema or in magic, you want it to be multi sensory. Uh, we, we talked a bit, you know, as it began, you're right up against that road. There's constant droning traffic and it's fine. But then you start to to go deeper and deeper into the property and because of the topology for it. Mm-hmm. Like it gets uh, uh, sacredly quiet, you know, like yeah. all of a sudden you're only hearing birds. And, and uh, it was it was cool that that moment happened and that uh, well, especially that time of day. It. Right. Sunday morning when, you know, there's. There's some. There's noise enough traffic point, that but... that it's annoying up at the top, but but yeah. quiet enough down at the bottom. Or I'm thinking of like you know we've heard kids playing next door and stuff, and then lo- oh, sure. little stuff like that, like it, it, because of the time also is not it is going to be very natural uh, time and place. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was pretty fun. Uh, no, thank you, VIPs. Great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, yeah. uh, whether whether it felt like uh, the funny part is, I thought we uh, gave a pretty good value for the VIPs as well. Hundred bucks got you two meals, mm-hmm. uh, a, a tour, uh, an hour plus tour of the property, drinks, and an uh, hour and a half show, and, and then an hour and a half show yeah. and Q and A at, at at Wizard Academy. And one of those pins. I didn't I didn't cop one of those pins. Those great VIP pins. Ah, uh, oh, that was that was a last minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm so glad we thought about that. Right. I, I I know how you can plus it. One more thing. What what's plus that? A game of tag. Ah. <laughs> Next time. Oh. <laughs> VIP tag. What is this? You just go in a parking lot like, uh, you're it. And <laughs> just start ah! running. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be good. The laser tag out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you just added a lot of cost there, Bryce. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> pew, pew tag. Pew, pew. <laughs> Pretend uh, laser tag. But yeah, you know. and, and, and oh, that, that would be cool, though. Laser tag out there, though. That is a good point, Bryce. Sorry. Uh, uh, they're not since I was booking... Andrew's tours uh, and and just trying to figure out the the logistics of like talking to the magic communities and, and my tour. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's a legit. Uh, you you did you went on legit, speaking tours, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, uh, I mean uh, back when I did like magic stuff with like tons of equipment, but like lectures, it's like ah, my shopping bags and my my briefcase. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you still have to arrange all them cities in the right order. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see you reaching out to all the magic clubs and, and booking the hotels and driving. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but but that was that was uh, as 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 uh, silly as that might sound. Uh, that was a uh, a fundamental experience for me of logistics and trying to figure out uh, how everything was going to string together. It was a fun puzzle to put together, and not since that. Um, had I uh, uh, just decided to like be like, all right, well then, what does a VIP experience look like? Like, what what are people on the hook for? Uh, what do they want? Like, what what is the moment that you want to avoid? And every time I saw a full dish of breakfast tacos or uh, 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 uneaten 
torchies at lunch, I was just thrilled because I knew the one the one thing that could not happen is the empty version of that. Uh, mm-hmm. As somebody has a, a a a plate and they're like looking around to see what else there is, I'm like, as long as we overbought on food, and as long as uh, uh, nobody was ever at a point where they were wondering what they were doing, I was uh, happy. I just want to say between chainsaws, like, that is a great point. When you plan events, more food. You don't want it, nothing makes people more grumpy than if they go to go to the food table mm-hmm. and because somebody decided to save thirty or forty bucks. Yes, you one person who doesn't get a sandwich. Yeah. You or will whatever not it is, remember the three spread. tacos you ate. You will remember the one taco that you didn't it, get. Did not eat. Oh God, yeah, and and uh, and also food, dietary stuff. It's mm-hmm. something to remember and. Uh, uh, specifically when you're dealing with people who are paying a premium price for something, it is always necessary. And and this is something that I'm sensitive to because my wife is vegan, but you always want to make sure that you are bending over backwards, that you are asking multiple times dietary restrictions. Let me know. Let me know what you want. Let me know what you like. If there's anything that you want specifically, we can make it happen. All those are $10, $15 problems. If you ask at the right time, they are, reputation ruining problems if you don't take care of it before the event right well we did it yeah we saved we saved (laughs) (laughs) we did Uh, with our chainsaws uh, (laughs) was there uh 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 what do you think was the highest hill that you overcome on on the weekend um Man, uh, the scheduling stuff, everybody yeah. being there, like like that event, like that logistical number of plates being spun, uh, crazy. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. Uh, uh, and and thankfully, we only had one uh, uh, missing person. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Willie Dills had a family emergency that he, he hit me up uh, about early enough, but it wasn't dual core or possum posse, which would have been a bigger yeah. uh, a thing. Uh, everybody made it to and from. Austin, like Ice Cream Social, so their planes came in on time. The Airbnbs worked out. Uh, you know, uh, uh, really, the I think that that's just all that logistical stuff because that's stuff that I had no previous experience. I mean, I, I had enough experience in traveling that I knew what traveling looked like and what you need to have, like a plane ticket and a place to stay. But uh, specifically that live event stuff and – you never know with the venue. Sometimes you get great venue people, and we had a great uh, uh, engineer. Yeah, uh, uh, she was a lifesaver. Sometimes you have mm-hmm. not great, and sometimes they are a bigger problem, or you have crossed mixed wires, and yeah. uh, you have to be competent. I think that was the moment in which uh, uh, you know we were there. There was one official adult, and she was the engineer, yeah. and she was dealing with a lot. Mm-hmm. And we had to tech out Possum Posse. We had to make sure that uh, they were going. And I know I'm looking outside and I see our audience just kind of like amassing in an, a big amorphous uh, 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 blob outside the venue. Uh, I'm like, man, we got to figure this out. I don't know whether or not uh, uh, we're allowed to just push this uh, ticket booth mm-hmm. outside. So I like poked around and asked a few of the people. And as soon as I got to that ain't my job, I'm just here to put out chairs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was like, all right, well, let's just push this thing out. And Demon 5, congratulations. Here's the list. Uh, For whatever reason, the the app wasn't working for brown paper tickets. Uh, So it was like, cool, just go and do it. Uh, There was just a a nice meshing of our own initiative. And I think that's really the, the big thing is that when you're running your own show, there ain't. Nobody else to run that flagpole up to when it's when it's you, uh, then there's like that. That's it. You can I, I could ask if there was somebody from the venue real quick that had any specific thing. Otherwise, it was just act. And then if you get yelled at, you get yelled at and you can say, hey, I looked. <laughs> yeah, that that beginning of the, the of the day on the live show was the, the biggest uh, uh, thing for me because. We we got there. We got there a little earlier than we thought we were. Than you know we had we had said we would, and you know the place was open, but there were no chairs, and we didn't have any engineers, and we couldn't really find any any staff people because we were early, and it was like okay, well, 
what's going on? Yeah. And so <laughs> that like being being in the little cage there, and then you know actually working out the timetable with Chris, our excellent engineer. Uh, and you know, getting on the same wavelength of like, okay, well, we're, we're we're really not rigid on this. We can be, we can move around, we can stop, we can make time for whatever we need, um, and making sure we were all uh, 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 going in the right direction. Um, and and once once that happened, once the show started, once uh, once the possum posse were on, it was like, we got it, you know. Well, really, at that point, everyone just needed to stay on time. And, and which that holy one, crap we did oh my who god who saw that coming and I know. without any whip cracking or anything everyone was just like okay uh you know this is the time that i saw so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up it was it was it was there was one act one act went over time do you know which which act went over time uh was, was it, it modern rogue yeah it was there was the one that had vinegar and baking soda all over but, the audience but they did start a little late uh, Modern, Modern Rogue did start, a, uh, I think, started just a, a little bit late because there was some setup stuff. Sure, sure. But, but even then, that's fine because we oh, built. It was, it was, it was by know. by minutes. minutes. It was by like one or two minutes. Uh, and it was really, I think, just because we were also trying. I think it was just more getting Jason back up onto the stage so you guys could do your wrap up uh, uh, thing. Uh, but but oh my god, uh, the, the the fact that we clicked at that time and even like Night Attack at the end cresting because the one thing that my the fear the fear of, of the show much like the fear of the empty taco tray the next day at the vip the fear of the show is we have to make dual cord not play hack all the things right or or all of a sudden possum bossies uh, going too late so they don't play guy in a buffalo or, or or something else happens with ice cream social or something like that and like night attack would have been the that that was the accordion slot mm -hmm. right like if anything goes long night attack suffers for it but the energy had just crested perfectly for Night Attack that it ended uh, almost like a dream right on time, which was great. Yeah. I've been looking online at commercial grade laser tag equipment because I can't get that out of my head. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I mean, that that would be next level. That would be cool. Get that, the... That's the sound of my desire. That wasn't uh, Andrew's chainsaw. Run, that was no, 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 the sound no, 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 of my no, no. desire to do laser tag in that wood. That, that's like every time you ever got yelled at for running or climbing like <laughs> in, in a commercial laser tag thing, it's like no rules here. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, do we have any uh, any 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 picks? We were like, hey, here's my pick. Google Sheets. It was really helpful to track all my expenses in Google Sheets and to make sure that I had a running total of what we were making on brown paper tickets and uh, on the VIP event. I used, uh, yes, yeah, so we used brown paper tickets to sell, uh, to sell uh, tickets to the show on Saturday. I just ran a pri I just ran a PayPal uh, dot me uh, slash night attack link for VIPs to pay, uh, and then. Uh, everything got tracked through there. So that's how we made sure that uh, all the expenses were kind of tracked together. Mm -hmm. uh, my pick is just Robert Young and Bryce Castillo. <laughs> it turns out they're really good <laughs> at getting the trains to run on time. Choo -choo. Wait. <laughs> uh, wait. <laughs> Choo -choo. Wait. <laughs> uh, and, of course, Andrew Main's pick is Black and Decker. <laughs> Uh, Bryce, uh, it's quiet now. Go ahead, Bryce. <laughs> uh, geez, do I have any other picks? I, you, you know, it was it was so busy. Um, uh, there there wasn't too much time to to actually. Well, was, what was it? Was there anything involved in the in 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 mm. the show? Any tools that you used in the show? Uh oh. Uh, no, I no, we I I really didn't. It, no, it, it, everything was was either like there was hardware, some hardware stuff, but it was not even our hardware for a lot of that stuff. So, uh, um, I, I, I'll look it up and I'll put it in the show notes. But uh, Ice Cream Social had a had this really great mixer board at uh, the VIP show. Oh yeah, which which we used, and I did not know it existed, and I would love for us to get one because it uh, that is a solution I didn't know existed, and it's it insanely light and small, but it. Mm -hmm. uh, Looked awesome, but it's a Zoom recorder, so it's actually multi-track, like the the Zoom that we oh, have. Oh, right, right on. So, uh, 
Uh, so and, after the fact, it's going to be easy to, to fix any of that if anything gets blown out. And it had uh, line outs so that we could go to the PA system. Uh, so it, it that I'll, I'll look it up. I'll put it in the show notes. But it's a Zoom. It's a Zoom multi track recorder. Right Andrew, on. my pick, and this is something that it's going to sound lame or dumb, but I buy these composition packs, these booklets. I buy them by like the dozens or so. I just have a stack of them because anytime I have a new project, mm -hmm. so I'm holding one of those, you know, like you had in school composition books, wide ruled. I buy these things, like I said, I buy a bunch of them. I have a case behind me. I start a new project. I, in, Typically when it's back to school time, you can get them super cheap at Walmart and places. But, you know, if I have a new project, I pick one up, put together a notebook. I've got a stack of them next to me here. Uh, awesome. Wow. And uh, uh, you know how they're made? They're made of wood pulp. How do they cut down the trees that are used to make that wood pulp to make the paper of that, that product? How? Uh, not sure. Nobody knows. It's a mystery. <laughs> the, the the best part was is between doing weird things to NAFTA things, I'm like, I got to go see what's going on out there because I'm imagining, I don't know, a couple of like yard workers with chainsaws. I see four guys in orange, you know, help, crash helmets. I mean, you know, hard hats, vests and a rope going 100 feet up in the air to the top of a tree and a guy up there with the chainsaw hacking away. I'm like, well, this is a real operation here. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to. You know, go, hey, 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 Jorge, could you maybe just do this later? No. Yeah, can you guys knock it off? I got some important business here. Anyway. We're podcasting. Yeah, anyway, so did the mummy have a butt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all good? Yeah, uh, uh, did, did you find the, the gizmo? Uh, yeah, it's the Zoom R16. This is it. It's, it's It is super light. Uh, it has XLR and uh, stereo inputs. Uh, this thing is a beast. Cool. Excellent. It's been after. And you notice, great internet today. Yeah. <laughs> great internet. You can have the one or the other. <laughs> Got all those branches out of the way. So. Uh, by the way, breaking right now in an interview to the Washington Post, Nancy Pelosi says that she is not impeaching Donald Trump. <laughs> That's weird news. <laughs> thing not happening. Oh, news. yeah. Think, think about things happening. Uh, when I made the joke about the thing, Brian, wasn't thinking about the thing. So. Uh, <laughs> what? what? About the thing. Exactly. Good. I made a comment about a naming a thing a thing, and I'm like, oh, the thing. And then oh, I, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, that's Wait, the... that's only 300 bucks? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's a, that's a must-buy. Yeah, that's a slam dunkaroo. Uh, yes. Does it do, like, mix minus as well? Uh, probably not. Uh, I... It'd, it'd be a mobile thing. It... Wouldn't need it to either. Yeah, I'm not sure. Dude, let's, let's, let's put that on, on what, speed yeah. order. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, well, that'll do it for us today. Uh, here, we're not... Uh, no Cord Killers live. It's already been recorded. It's already in the feeds. Yay! Cordkillers.com. Just go get it. Uh, we'll be back next week with Cord Killers. Night Attack will be uh, at uh, uh, 10 Eastern tomorrow with uh, the show, whatever the show looks like. Uh, it, the footage looks great. I got a chance to spot check everything. Oh, uh, good. John oh, and Brand I, did a oh, great job. What's funny is you said with the show. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be editing it got all. It, got it. Got um, it. Got uh, it. Oh, man. Anti pick. Uh, those GoPros are great. They do not do well in the dark. Oh, really? We didn't like the audience, really. And mm. so those reaction shots, one of them looked really bad. One of them looks okay. Uh, but anyway, tomorrow, nightattack.tv. And then we'll try to the podcast out um, soon after that. And then, um, and then yeah, we'll be back to the normal schedule next week. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Yay. Bye.